No safety net. I've still got to level the surface to glue the bridge on and I've got some tear out here which I want to minimise. Now I can fill this with um, a, a paste that I'm going to make a filler uh, made from glue and uh, sawdust but I'm going to try to put a little slither of wood in here because this is the bit that's going to be noticeable. These bits are going to be buried under the arms of the, the wings of the bridge but here it's going to be visible and because this is already square I'm just going to tidy that up with a chisel and see if I can get a little uh, slither of wood right in here. But I think rather than cutting into the surface of the guitar I'm just going to use the chisel as a scraper. It's a lot cleaner now. Probably better for gluing. I've now got a little patch which frankly looks horrible but with the potassium permanganate trick I'm hoping I can tone it into the guitar and of course this is I think going to get all rubbed down because I, I can't refinish this without well <laughs> these are decisions that are still to be made. Um, that's not glued in, which is the next step to do, so I'm going to glue that in and I'm actually going to clamp it for an hour. I'm using tight bond rather than super glue because Super glue has been giving me quite visible joins, whereas tight bond should be invisible. I don't know whether to use a call on top, I think I can just bear down on this with the plastic. Tiny little bit of squeeze out. Should do fine. Right, we'll leave that for an hour. Let's go do something else. One large lump of apparently old spruce, which I'm going to use to create some dust to make a filler paste. And I'm just going to use my saw rasp on the end. I'll take some of the, the outer layer off first, just to tidy it up, clean it up a little bit. I don't know whether this dust is fine enough though. Now that I've got the initial layer off, the dust's much finer, so I think we'll use that. The uh, colour of this dust is actually quite good, but I just wondered whether there were some contaminants in it, so I'm going to get rid of that and use the fresh, fresh dust up the edge. I know you're wondering why I'm not using mechanical means of creating dust, or just create, or just collecting whatever dust I've got lying around. The dust I've got in my vacuum cleaner is just too contaminated with lots of other stuff. And if I try to create some more dust by mechanical means and collect that, I haven't really got a way of co collecting uncontaminated dust. It's still going to have the dregs of whatever else has been through there. So um, what this method gives me though is I now have a lovely smooth end to this piece of spruce so I can see exactly where all the grain lines are because I've got to resaw this and I want to be sawing it along the grain because I'm, on, I'm going to be using it with bracing 
using it for bracing and I don't think I can cleave this without it going all over the place so I'm going to saw it but saw it as close to the grain as I can keep to the grain lines you know what I'm filming me making sawdust I'm sure this is not what you want to be watching <laughs> is it? <laughs> maybe not I think we'll do a cut later <laughs> I don't know whether this is enough dust, but I'll do for now. I might need to make some more. I have actually got another supply of dust in reserve, but it's contaminated dust that's a mixture of spruce, maple and pine, and I don't really want to use it. I need to try and get this clean before I fill it, so um, I'm going to use naphtha, also known as lighter, lighter fluid. Just give it a quick clean and then I'm going to do a bit of scraping using a scalpel blade. And this could be an interesting experiment actually to see whether the naphtha will dissolve the uh, whatever this is on the surface of the guitar. Apparently it doesn't. But it also doesn't take the finish off. It, if I'd used alcohol, I'm pretty sure I'd take the finish off the top of the guitar. Um, something's come off there. There's uh, definitely some dirt has come come away. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll experiment more with the muck on top of the guitar later. some of the dirt. This is really mostly just to get rid of any oil and grease that will stop the glue adhering. I think I've actually taken finish away so despite me thinking that naphtha won't won't dissolve uh, the finish some of this would suggest that maybe it does. The finish, the shellac, is alcohol soluble. I didn't think naphtha would attack shellac. But, mm, but it definitely looks a lot cleaner. Do a bit of scraping there. Square, sc square scalpel blade. It just seems more gentle than going at it with a chisel. It flexes and there's a limit to how much pressure you can put on it. It's clean. There is actually um, there is actually finish on top of the guitar. I'm wondering whether the bridge was glued on over the top of the finish, which would it's never a good idea. At the very least, you should scrape the finish off before sticking the bridge on. I don't think I'm going to go out this far or here. I think those can stay as they are. I'll just put a little bit of fill around these edges. Most of the filler will be sanded away. There's very little here, but I just want to get an absolutely flat surface for bridging. For bridging? For gluing the bridge. I think there are pencil marks where the old bridge used to be. really noticed that before but I think what I assumed was just dirt around the edge of the bridge I think actually might be a pencil mark. That feels like something solid in the surface of the wood. There we go. This is the glue that I'm going to be using to glue the bridge on with. It's Apparently uh, harder than some other type bonds. So 
We just mix it all up together and try to create a nice thick paste. Mm, I think this is going to end up a lot thicker than I anticipated actually. <laughs> Already I can see that there's a contaminant in there, a little hair I think. I nearly said, or is it a rabbit, and that would have been a really bad thing to say. Right, that is a very thick paste. I clearly don't need as much dust as I thought I did. So let's put that onto the guitar. Oh dear, <laughs> this feels weird. There's a hair in it. And I can't. Oh, I saw it briefly and now it's gone. There it is. I managed to remove a hair from the mixture. Doing it. Very good colour match for the well, colour match for the for the new spruce. I wonder whether I can darken this using potassium permanganate if it doesn't quite match up with the old spruce when it's sanded back. I have a little bit of cling film. I'm wondering whether I can just press it in using cling film. No, I can't. Well, there's some success there, but it's it just pulls it up, and that's my problem. Well, I'm just making this worse. Maybe if I had a damp, or well, a damp finger, maybe. Yeah, there we go, that's how you do it. You damp your finger, and then you just press it down, but don't let it get too damp. I know that will shrink, but I, I think I've got enough in there that it will, it will fill all the uh, all the gaps. A lovely work of art. <laughs> what a mess! But it'll sand down. So there we go. I'll leave that overnight. I now have to flatten the surface ready for gluing and uh, pretty it up somewhat. I'm still very wary of, of sanding away any of the finish until I've decided exactly how much of, to do to the finish, whether to strip the whole front of the guitar and completely refinish or somehow just try to enhance it and get rid of the, this insect muck or whatever it is. Now in my mind before I started this the plan was I was just going to get a flat surface with some sandpaper on it on there and rub away protecting the outer parts with masking tape and then just having a little bit of sandpaper in the on the middle of the thing just to cover the bridge and then just gently taking it away and getting it completely flat and this was based on the fact that I believed the top of the guitar is flat which it is here but here it has actually a significant dip in the middle I hope you can you can see that and it's it continues right the way up to the bridge over the brace the, the the brace is just here that brace is completely flat there's a brace here and I'm assuming that unless it's bent that this brace maybe this brace is deliver deliberately bowed in I'm, I'm not sure but this bridge is not completely flat and if I start sanding over the top with a flat plate we're not going to be taking any of this area off at all. So change of plan. I think I'm just going to be using this is 
1200 grit we'll get rid of that but I think I'm I'm just going to be gently sanding down in the vicinity of the bridge and, and that will have to be flat enough and then when we clamp I, I think it will pull the top up slightly it's not ideal but at least I know it is absolutely flat along here 120 grit and straight away scratching the surface of the guitar I think I'm going to put masking tape around of course the masking tape won't won't stop this area getting uh, actually maybe I should hmm. Maybe I should put some masking tape in there. Pulling the masking tape off actually does take some of the finish with it, so actually having just done that, I may have damaged the finish. Oh no. Yeah, you see, the, the, the surface of this guitar is so delicate, the finish is so thin, and you can see how the masking tape is pulling pulling it away at the surface. I need to need to peel it with the grain. I kind of knew this was going to happen. It is going to have to be refinished, I think. I can't I can't leave it like this. Yeah, as long as I peel with the grain I'm okay, but you can see you can see how much of the finish has been pulled off there. Is it a bit excessive to be mitering the masking tape? <laughs> I've now got a single layer of masking tape, so because we're we're getting quite, quite close, we're, we're thicker than the, the width of the masking tape still, but it seems uh, better this way. I am going to put the jack inside the guitar just to try and just raise this spot here. It's almost flat. So I don't want to over tighten this. There we go. I'm almost flush with the surface now here, but clearly still got a little bit of a way to go on the arms. I, I can't really sand this now without taking down some of the surrounding area. The, this patch is the thickness of the masking tape. So I'm going to switch from using this to a much smaller, got a lump of perspex. Um, we'll put some um, sandpaper on there, probably still keep the same 120 grit for now and then just gently go over the edges and work around here and just take down the rest of it. The method of using masking tape and then gluing the paper on with um, super glue is so much better than double-sided tape. It doesn't leave any residue. Double-sided tape is just so messy and, and, it, and, and it creeps. Whereas this just sticks perfectly in it, it's really secure. So uh, I, can f I can definitely recommend this method of attaching the paper. Down to 240 as we're getting quite close now. It, it feels flush here and it's just a whisker short of being flush everywhere else, although it is a little bit thicker on the wings. You can see the areas of tear out under here where the filler is thicker, but this fill around the edge is superfluous really and I, I really want to get rid of it and I'm just having to be very careful. I, I'm tempted to just use my finger with some paper um, but I, I, I am trying to keep everything flat but at this stage everything is so thin anyway that amount of small variation of height I don't think it will make any difference. Um, it might be time to take the uh, take the masking tape off. I don't want a hard line anyway. Even if I try to take the masking tape off with the grain, it's still been lifting the finish in places. 
No safety net. 400 grit. It's got to the point where I, I can feel an edge here and I guess I can feel a slight edge in most places but I can't feel an edge at all there or there so we're, we're level there. Um, slight edge there. So it's really just careful refining and trying to get rid of some of the shadow of this filler and just get down carefully to the, to the wood underneath. I finished with the 400 grit and I've got to the point where I can't feel any of the edges but obviously I can see them so I'm just going to with some 800 grit just feather the edges carefully just to blend them in and hopefully remove some of this uh, really unwanted filler very very thin layer I've got here because I, I doubt it will finish invisible big reveal. I, I'm going to do a bit more refining here, just see if I can get rid of some of the, uh, the filler that you can see there. And clearly this is very visible, the, uh, the, the little piece of uh, um, spruce that I uh, inlaid in. <clears throat> but I can, I can deal with that, I can put potassium permanganate on it and age it back to the colour of the underlying wood. I can also, I can see um, a pencil line just here which I hadn't noticed so <clears throat> I'll do a bit more refining here to get rid of that pencil line but it is looking <laughs> very good um, and it is completely flat I do still have the jack inside by the way um, but when it clamps it will, it will press it all together and I think that will be okay I'm going to apply some potassium permanganate to this area just to darken it It oxidizes the wood and gives it a bit of vintage color. I'm just going to do this edge here as well because it's it's quite close just in case it it's visible from underneath the bridge but it should be okay. see that it's going brown already. As I explained, I did a, a video on potassium permanganate and I did explain that part of the brown colour is actually the manganese dioxide but I've no doubt that it does have an effect on the colour of the, the wood underneath. I'm trying to match this to the colour here so that's probably enough already actually. It feels like we're getting close. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see this guitar in action sometime soon. See you later.